Not too long ago, I made a community post asking my subscribers to upload their best performing YouTube thumbnails so Nate from Channel Makers and I could take a look at them and tell you how to make them better. We got hundreds of responses and you guys have some really great looking thumbnails. But I passed those thumbnails off to Nate so he could score them and so we could figure out a few to really highlight some information to help you learn how to make better thumbnails for your YouTube videos. So we're gonna call Nate and see what he came up with. Yeah, um... Hey! Nate, what's up, dude? How's it going? It is going good. Going good. Good to talk. Good to talk for sure, man. Hey, did you get a chance to check out the uh, that collection of thumbnails that I sent over to you that we collected from the community the other day? Absolutely. <laughs> I've been looking at hundreds of them. I picked some favorites. Let's get into it then and, and show everybody how to start getting more clicks on their thumbnails. So we're going to do that and we're starting right now. Okay, so one of the biggest questions that I was having when I was looking through all of these thumbnails, there was hundreds of thumbnails, which thank you everybody in Nick's audience. You guys have some awesome, awesome thumbnails. So as I was looking through these, I realized one of the best things that I could share with you would be a way to measure your own thumbnails because we know you're here, you've watched a lot of Nick's videos, you know how important thumbnails are on YouTube, right? So in order to do that, this is for Nick and for you watching this, I came up with a simple four point system um, to measure, to judge your own thumbnails on four different aspects of your thumbnail. The first is audience match, like how well that thumbnail matches the audience that you're looking to target. The second is the overall quality of the thumbnail, the images, the graphics, your face, if your face is in it. Uh, and the third is the clarity. How easy is it to understand the message of that thumbnail? And then the fourth, is the curiosity or the idea match. Like how curiosity inducing, how interesting or appealing is the thumbnail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here with Nick watching also and share several of the thumbnails that you shared and give ratings as well as commentary on each of those four aspects of the thumbnail so you get a good sense of how to judge your own. And I'm taking notes too, Nate. Like I know you're getting ready to drop some fire right here. So I'm taking notes myself. Super looking forward to this. Okay, so first video, this is from the channel Better Mind Journey which as of recording has 50 subscribers. Um, you're doing awesome. This video has almost three times that amount of views. And this video is, is this important to understand as we're looking at this thumbnail? It's four tips to switch off after working from home. So let's look at the thumbnail. So first things that I am liking about this thumbnail, um, it's got a great original image, but I do like that this image was created original. We've got some graphics as well as the creativity of using the words relax o'clock because we're trying to switch off after working from home, right? I give it a score between one and five. You can do this for your own thumbnails. This one, match for the audience. Hey, we're looking to improve mindset. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. It's very, pretty clear. I like the creativity of this right here, the relax o'clock. I like that it's kind of a fun play on words and it does have an original image, so it's going to be eye-catching. The next thing I'm looking at on this thumbnail is quality. The thing that I measure here is the, the quality of the images, but also does it feel generic? And in this case, the use of these paper clips, this, this clock, most of the time, I don't normally suggest using kind of clip art type of stuff, but in this case, it's been tied together with a nice color scheme, so it does bump it up, that score in my mind. So as far as overall quality, the image looks good, I'm gonna give it a four. Next factor I'm gonna judge this on is the overall clarity. Now, this is the rule I would say. If you're looking at your thumbnails and you're saying, how clear is the idea of this thumbnail? And especially if I were to go way back, I call it you know the six foot away rule, or if you're on your phone, you could just pull up your phone and look at your thumbnail on a phone screen and say, how easy is it to discern all the elements of this thumbnail and how well can I understand the concept of the thumbnail from that far away. This one's doing pretty well for me, so I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Now, the last factor to judge your own thumbnails is the idea or the curiosity match. Now, if I were to put this in a succinct way, it would be how intriguing is that thumbnail to the right audience, to the audience that you're targeting with your content. Now, this one I was left wanting uh, because it doesn't necessarily give me any strong, compelling reasons to watch it. Um, it's got kind of a, you know, a posed picture over here. Um, we've got a clock. It's like, okay, it has to do with time. We've got relax o'clock, which is creative, but it's not necessarily curiosity inducing to me. So on this, I actually gave it a score of one out of five. The important thing to remember here is 
each of those aspects are important and you can nail one and lose the others and still not have an effective thumbnail. So we're not just gonna leave it at that. What would we change about this? This is um, a couple of guys, Nick and myself, getting together and saying, look, there, here's a thumbnail. Um, the impression, what would actually make this thumbnail that much better? So for me, I, I can start off here. Um, the main thing, and this is why I scored it so low, is I don't have a strong appealing reason to watch this video. Now the video we know is called Four Tips to Switch Off After Work From Home, which I think is a good concept. It's a good idea for a video, but based on this thumbnail, there's no strong like, uh, yeah, yeah, I wanna watch that. So what it needs to me is some sort of like actual listicle or showing like um, tip number one and then maybe we blur out the other ones. So it's non-obvious feeling. It feels like, oh, she's gonna share some really good information in this and I'm not getting any of that thus far. In addition to that, on my end, one of the things that, um, that I think would be really helpful for this, the clarity in terms of relax o'clock. Um, really with this thumbnail, just saying relax after work might just add a lot more clarity because you got words on there anyway. So if you're gonna, you know, take up that that screen real estate with words, then, you know, go ahead and just make it clear, you know, relax after work. So then that way it's crystal clear. They don't have to put any thought into it whatsoever. But in addition to that, um, I also think you need to make it stand out a little bit. If you look at the thumbnail, you can see that you're wearing a purple shirt. You have the pink, pinkish purple background. You have the pinkish purple relax word there. And because of that, it's just kind of like a muted thumbnail and it doesn't really mm -hmm. pop so to speak so because of that i would either change the entire background to maybe like a like a soft yellow or maybe like a like a soft blue or change the word relax into into you know like a yellow with maybe a thicker black on the border um, or maybe a light blue there as well just to kind of help it stand out against that pink mm -hmm. you could even experiment with orange um, in that area as well and if you're like really high level photoshop then in that case um, if you did take the approach where you're changing the color of the word you might also want to change the colors of your shirt as well and change it from that purple to a color that would match the blue just to kind of pull it all together and create that you know final good looking in product, so to speak. All right, next thumbnail I was looking at here is from the channel TLO, Mike Rogers is just over a thousand subscribers, congratulations, and is doing pretty darn good in terms of views. Um, and it's what I look for when hunting mule deer part one. Now, this thumbnail was very interesting to me, but the first thing I'm looking at here is audience match, meaning how well does this thumbnail match the audience that I'm trying to attract on YouTube? And where it's hunting, I thought this did, it was, it was pretty good, not very descriptive. And so I give it a three out of five. It's, it's, it's fine, it's doing fine. The next aspect I'm looking at here is the overall quality of it. Now, um, this is just an image, just a photograph, uh, and there's two words and a couple of arrows. It's kind of middle of the line, so I give that a three out of five. Now, as far as clarity, the clarity scoring here, I could read this. I mean, it's a little bit odd that the O's are filled in and the R is filled in, but I could read this from far away. It's good, it gives the right impression, uh, but again, it's middle of the line. I'm gonna give it a three also. Now, the last aspect is intrigue, or how appealing the idea of the video itself is, again, for the target audience. This one actually scores higher for me, which is actually why it stood out when I was looking through all of the thumbnails. I'm gonna give this one a five, actually, and here's why. It leads my eyes very clearly, look here, to something happening, and therefore I have the curiosity of what is happening, and I need to know what it is. I think I was nicer than I should have been, Nick, here. <laughs> if this were to show up on a homepage next to a bunch of other hunting-related content, then there's a really good chance that if that other hunting related content had imagery that was more symbolic of hunting, that somebody's attention would be pulled more to that than it would this. So I think that, you know, how he's got the, you know, like the open field in there, like I think he's halfway there. Like I think he's, you know, like he's, he's on that path because, you know, this could be something related to hunting, but I just think that he needs to dial it in a little bit more. You know, it'd be a great fix for this yeah. to where he could leave everything exactly as it is if he just put a scope as like an overlay right on top of this, because then that way, you know, a hunter might, you know, recognize that. Um, that would be experiment number one. Next video we're looking at, this is uh, from the channel, The Film Cactus, which has uh, just over 500 subscribers, and the video's done pretty well, 7,600 views, and it's making the protein bars from Snowpiercer. Now, I personally haven't watched the show, but let's take a look at this thumbnail. Okay, so first things I'm seeing, uh, again, in terms of audience match, 
it's about a show. Uh, the audience, I'm assuming, based on the name of the channel, The Film Cactus, they're doing commentary on films and so or films or shows, right? And so Snowpiercer, we've got it going up here. Protein bars, we've got an image from the show behind here, and then an image of the channel maker right here, showing them eating the same thing. So as far as like matching the right audience, I'm gonna give this a three out of five. It feels like okay, this is good. It's going to appeal to the right audience. The next factor being quality overall. Um, this is where I have kind of the biggest issue. Well, quality and clarity. Because quality, we can see something's going on. We put the, the logo of the show up here, right? Um, it's Snowpiercer. We've got an image. But the problem is it's too flat. And this plays into clarity also. I see this. It almost looks like this image right here and this image are the same image. And it feels like the image of the channel maker needs to pop out more. It needs to be more distinct from the rest of this background. In this case, if they were actually looking at the camera instead of looking down at the bar, then that would create a little bit of a separation there. Um, a little bit of a drop shadow on the person so that it's clear, you know, that they're away from that background um, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I also think that since the creator's in this anyway, would you agree that, you know, emotion here would really take this one to like an, another level? I want to know how that bar tastes. Like, because I'm not, I'm not getting a sense. And I get, I think the thinking going into this was, I'm going to basically recreate this over here. You know, I'm, I'm going to make the exact same image. It'll be creative, right? I'm going to create the same thing, but I don't think it's serving. Overall quality, I'm giving it a two. Uh, clarity, again, a two, just because of the factors that we talked about. A little drop shadow, um, maybe a white outline, maybe a little glow. Just, I would experiment with a lot of those things because it needs to feel like this is my image. Appeal for the audience. Again, I'm going to score it low. I'm going to give it a two or three, mostly because it, it's good. It's like, hey, I actually made these. You know, we've got the quotation protein bars, right? From what I understand from the comments, they put bugs in the bars and stuff. And so, I want to see a reaction. And so the intrigue factor would be exactly what Nick was saying, that that emotion. I want to see you eating it and like, oh, like this is disgusting or eating it like, oh, that's not bad. Just some sort of reaction I think would really improve this. Now, Nate, really quick, while we're sharing all this information about thumbnails, you have like an hour long training inside of your Project 24 YouTube system, right? I do actually, because what I've found is oftentimes what people need is a tool to walk them through systematically, methodically, how to produce an effective thumbnail, as well as really recognize um, what aspects of other thumbnails were successful versus not, like actually how to judge thumbnails across all of YouTube. Awesome, and you have like other growth related things in there too. So pretty much like anything someone needs help with with their channel, like you've got all that covered in there? Yes, uh, I think that perhaps one of my strengths is uh, system and just seeing patterns. And so I have a methodical just this, 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 this. It's incredibly helpful, yes. Because I know, you know, Nate's not gonna say it, but just so everybody knows, um, you can find that over at channelmakers.com. So make sure that you check that out if you need some help with your thumbnails. All right, next one. I had to pick this one because they did something really interesting with it. So the channel's Para. It's just over 100 subscribers as of recording, doing really well. It's Teen Reacts to Dream versus Five Hunters Grand Finale. Now, the interesting thing here is actually Para submitted two different thumbnails as well as a screenshot. Let me show you. So this was the first thumbnail, thumbnail A. They tested this one and then they tried another thumbnail, which was this one. Now, if you compare it to the other one, there's some significant differences. Now, he's reacting. It's the classic reaction face we got going over on this side. But the main difference was we added an arrow over here and showed a different scene from the grand finale, what he was reacting to. So Nick, I wanted to have a little fun with this one and say, which one of these thumbnails do you feel like did better in terms of overall views? I would think that the other one would do better. So um, I would think that the one without the arrow and the other one would do better just because it's more easy to recognize. But um, but of course that those arrows and circles, man, those things those things work like a charm. So um, but I'm just gonna you know for the sake of playing the game, I'm gonna say that the one right here with the majority of the Minecraft imagery was the winner. So everybody watching, just so you know, Nick is uh, he knows his stuff. Let me show you the screenshot. We had a spike and then it kind of leveled off when he switched it to B and then he switched back to A and it took off again. Crazy, crazy. So let's talk about why 
A, this thumbnail A, we think it did better. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that, that we always talk about, Nate, is, is how important it is to help people recognize that your content is something that, you know, that they care about or that they would be interested in. And in this example, I think that having the Minecraft elements in the bottom thumbnail and the B thumbnail, um, you know, it has those elements in there, but it's just much easier to recognize with the one in the top. But in addition to that, we also have the color of the shirt. So here he changed his shirt color to red, which also grabs more yep. attention than the white does as well, especially for light mode users. And the other big thing, and I genuinely think this is one of the biggest factors, it's reacting to a large Minecraft YouTuber. And it's not obvious in this thumbnail visually that that's that YouTuber. But this one, he's got the same look in every video that's like his branded look, Dream's branded look. And it's very clear in this one, as well as up here, there's five people looking down on them. It's a more intriguing um, uh, image overall. Yeah, that part about it being about another content creator, like I didn't even know that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that part uh, standing out in terms of also tapping into that other content creator's branding. Yeah, that's like that's like next level stuff right next there. Level so yeah, that, that, yeah, that's awesome. Now look, in addition to thumbnails, I know you also want to make your lighting and your set look better. So we made a video over on Nate's channel sharing all kinds of tips about how to improve your lighting and your set design. You can click into that right here, right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.